Hello all. Happy Sunday to you. I hope this week has found you well and um, hanging out in the heat okay. It's a beautiful weekend at the moment. Um, Labor Day weekend is quite often um, rainy and what, but so far so good. It's beautiful out. So we'll jump into last week's somewhat puzzler. Uh, the question was, which is heavier, carbonated water or non-carbonated water? So I will um, play for you my my son's answer, and then I will help define that just a little bit. Here you go. With the answer? Yeah. Tell us the answer. So it decarbonated soda because it has more mass. Than flat soda, considering flat, if you carbonate water, then all the the only thing extra it has the normal water is carbon dioxide, and that has mass. So one more time, which is heavier? Carbonated. And why so, is that? Because it has carbon dioxide. Which makes it heavier than non-carbonated water or soda. Yeah. Thank you, Doctor Science and dusty. Okay, so just to add a little clarification to that, um, I did a little research and this is kind of an, an iffy subject and it, it kind of depends on the circumstances and then how you process it, but this is what we came up with. It says a given volume of carbonated water will be heavier than the same volume of uncarbonated water. And the reason for this is two grams of CO2 dissolved in a liter of water a liter of water is a thousand grams and you still have a liter of carbonated water but now it weighs a thousand and two grams because you've added two grams of co2 into your a thousand grams of uncarbonated water so it makes it a thousand and two grams two grams heavier than just normal water this is however as long as the bottle is pressurized and sealed and you don't have any um, gaps that are diffusing the carbonation as you go along to measure. So, there you go for that. <laughs> okay, so, um, we were on the, the topic of butterflies last week. I did take them to uh, North Carolina. Right as we crossed into Virginia, three of them hatched in their sanctuary in the car. Um, and I couldn't, uh, couldn't let them go on the side of 95 for fear of a truck smashing into them. So we uh, we kept them in the car all the way to North Carolina and uh, released them there, which was too much fun. Um, I'm having a, a short video of that to show you. Um, I have a picture of them in the car during transport. Then the next day, um, I got up and I was leaving North Carolina and on the way another one hatched. So I pulled into a nature park and released that one um, and then all the rest of them made it home safe and uh, the rest of that batch we released in Maryland um, so just to give you a little little update I did a little research on these monarch butterflies the reason we're doing this um, is a because somebody gave them to me and told me to but B that uh, the population of monarch butterflies is um, decreasing by like 80% so they need some help staying alive and staying safe while they eat their milkweed and and then hatch and fly self. So let's see what I got. I got uh, the average monarch lifespan is six to eight months and they fly all the way from Canada um, either out to California if they're a west coast butterfly or down to Mexico every every year. They hang out for the winter and then they head head back to the, either the east or west coast um, places of birth. A female monarch butterfly can lay 300 to 500 eggs, which, which, is, which is a lot. Um, as we mentioned, the, the caterpillars eat nothing but milkweed, um, and then they get all fat and happy, and they turn into a chrysalis. The chrysalis hatches, and a butterfly is born, and I have some, some decent pictures of, of that, I think, that I will share with you also. Uh, let's see, butterflies, these monarch butterflies are super colorful because that denotes to other birds and what that they are poisonous because milkweed is actually toxic. 
So um, when they turn into a butterfly, they still hold on to that toxicity and butterflies don't want to eat them. I mean, birds don't want to eat the butterflies because they know they're toxic and gross and poisonous. Um, they can fly up to 3,000 miles, um, which is amazing for this tiny little fragile creature. So I have a bunch of pictures to show you, um, and I'll and we'll we'll do that now. Hang on. Okay, so, um, as I've been thinking about these creatures, um, God's creatures, I, I have just been amazed that the caterpillar, um, turns into a chrysalis and dies. I mean, there's nothing left that resembles a caterpillar, and then is reborn into this butterfly. Um, when I was thinking the other day, you know, I don't, off the top of my head, can't come up with anything else that really does that. I'm sure there are things out there that do maybe, and, and you guys maybe would know some that you could share with me, but I was, I was thinking how amazing that is that that caterpillar more or less gives up its life to create something brand new and amazing, and what else does that? And then, you know, as oftentimes happens, that 2 by 4 clops me upside down the head, and uh, I was like, well, Jesus did that, um, suffered and died and gave up his life for us so that we can be born anew and transformed into something beautiful and greater and um, I just, I think that's neat. So the next time that I see a, a butterfly, I think I'm going to think of that caterpillar that gave its life so that that butterfly could be born like Christ gave his life so that we could be born and transformed. In, um, in last week's video, I ended it with um, a scripture, and I want to read that to you again. It's 2 Corinthians um, chapter 5, verse 17, and it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old passed away. Behold, the new has come. So, um, just, just an amazing adventure this has been, and an amazing um, reminder of God's creation and Christ's love for us and his sacrifice that he gave so that we may be transformed and born anew. Um, I'm end of that. That's, that's a pretty cool, pretty cool idea, I think. Alright, so on to this week's puzzler. This is a good one. You math nuts out there, be all excited. Okay, ready? A hen and a half lays an egg and a half in a day and a half. How many eggs does one hen lay in one day? So we'll read that one more time. A hen and a half lays an egg and a half in a day and a half. How many eggs does one hen lay in one day? Godspeed with that. Let me know what your thoughts are. Um, go be butterflies. Go be born anew in, in Christ's love and God's care. Have a blessed week and be well until I see you again. Take care.